Welcome back to the show, everybody. Ruby, volume six, chapter number nine. Lost. All right. It's been a while since I've had to do this. Let, let, let the most dangerous hand in the multiverse get loose because we need to have a real conversation. Been a while since we've done it, but this episode really warrants that real conversation. I want you to take a second. I want you to think about what it is that I'm about to say. Y'all know about those brick walls we run into in life, right? Whether the ones we smack face dead into that causes us problems or the ones that we feel stuck to and pressured to because we have no choice. What about those chasms they tell you not to look down at and you look down at that motherfucker and it's like, yo, can I make it to the other side of this thing? Because if I jump in this thing and I miss, I'm going to be swallowed whole by this thing and it's going to gonna, it's gonna spit me back out. And I'm going to be worse for wear or it's going to completely swallow me and I'm just going to plainly disappear. This is what this episode was all about. Those brick walls and those chasms and how you deal with those chasms. Whether it's you dealing with it, whether you're being forced to deal with it, or just it just gets dealt with. Because look at the, look at the beginning of our episode. We got Emerald and Mercury. And Emerald is still in this mode of, if it ain't no Cinder, what's the fucking point, right? Like, Cinder, that's fam. You know what I mean? That's family. You know what I'm saying? And for and for the rest of y'all to just be as dismissive as fuck for somebody that I love and care about that always and took care of me, that's kind of fucked up. That's what's in our head right now. But then we got Mercury sitting up here lacing some truth on him for real. It don't matter as much as you think. Survival is paramount. Survival is key. Look how I came up. My father sat up here and, gr and just treated me like I was an ant that he squashed under his foot. Beating me down, taking everything from me. But ultimately, I overcame and I took everything from him. It's like you ask me to question like why I'm doing what I'm doing. Look, it just so happened I killed my daddy. And then y'all came up, yo, looking for somebody like me. Whether that's fate, questionable happenstance, whatever, shit happens, right? Those experiences made me who I am. And it's like, yo, situation is what the situation is. And I'm gonna I'm gonna milk this cow for all it's worth. You should do the same. And we're not hearing none of this. It's like e even even with that kind of very aggressive, heartfelt confession for Mercury, she's still not feeling it, though. Because she just sitting up her like, dude, for real, like, her mind hasn't changed. It's like, yo, if it, if, it ain't, if it ain't about my fam, then it don't matter. It's like, at the same time, though, just on some, just on some, I'm, I'm watching this. At the end of the day, you miss your buddy. Your daddy treated you like shit. Don't none of that matter in the face of the man. Because it don't. The man want the, what the man want. Because the man is going to get what she want. And if she don't, your ass is grass. We've talked about this before. Because this sounds very familiar. Oh, it's like, yeah, you can sit up here and have these heartfelt feelings about your best buddy or what your daddy did to you. In the grand scheme of shit, it don't mean a damn thing. You want to know why? Your boy, Young Scorpion. OG Young Old Scorpion, a.k.a. that boy Tyrion in the cut. Like, I've been listening. And honestly, you motherfuckers ain't said a word. That, that you can summarize that whole thing. It don't matter. Summarize what he really said. The game is changing. The man is adapting. Get right or get your ass left. In general, Period. There's some questions in that. A big one. The man spooked. Because see, you don't have somebody like Salem sitting up here changing the plan all of a sudden like this dramatically unless she knows shit's going down. It'll be interesting to see as we close this chapter out to really see like what's going on in her head because that's something that given this situation that I want to know and understand about a character as multifaceted and as deep and as how crazy that goes 
I'm looking to really see like what's going on in that noodle of hers because it's got to be something. It's got to be something so dramatic, so crazy for her to sit up and alter the game like this so much because of what's going on. Oh, but, but that's all it was. Emerald has feelings. Mercury doesn't really care. And Tyrion really don't give a fuck. And Arthur, he just died. And that was that. Remember, beginning of this, we talked about those brick walls we run into. Those brick walls we get pressured and stuck on in that chasm. You thought we were done with those? We are totally not. Previously on this show, John Ark had to choke a bitch. And I think he was really happy at how he choked the bitch. Like, Wayne Brady and Latrell Spreewell will be will be very, very proud of one John R. for how he had to choke a bitch. Because he had to choke that bitch. But but then he felt really bad about it. Now, now the squadron is out looking for him. <sighs> this part is going to be really, it's not really hard to say. As much as I don't know in this review state, do I really want to go revisit what I was feeling through all of that? I'll say this. When Pyrrha got murdered, that broke my heart. <laughs> like, for real. Like, like my heart broke for the character. It's like, And it wasn't not only like I said that I appreciated Pyrrha as a character, but the show needed to do that. But that's all why we also have Ruby GB, so there's that. But like I said, though, I've been carrying that hurt as a fan of this show ever since she died. And every time they get really emotional, especially John when he's trying to deal with his feelings about her, it hit me like a freight train, too. That scene in the park, that was hard to watch. Stomach and swallow. It was. I'm even getting I'm even getting a little teary out about it right now, actually. But it's in that that leading up to that point. They all fell off to John, Ren, Nora. They lost someone they cared about really truly cared about when you lose that it's hard to come back even from someone who knows it is but it's possible because if it wasn't and I wasn't living proof of that would I be in front of this camera in front of you talking about my feelings this openly that a show has me digging that deep into my emotional well because of how invested I am in this show. And for the umpteenth time, let me look in the camera and say it. Well, this is the first time I looked in the camera and said it, but I've said it before. When you invoke these feelings, you're doing the right thing by your character and your world. Just because some rare hair lady that they didn't name in the credits had this long talk about Pyrrha and where she came from and what it is that she represented as a person and her heroic sacrifice to make sure that the world could stay safe for even a microsecond. It's worth it. It's, I, know, I know that it's hard because that's not a brick wall. That's a chasm. And then sometimes even looking down that chasm, especially when you feel it hurt, jumping down that chasm seems real easy. It seems like the answer to all of your prayers, if you pray to the question that I've been thinking, that it's got to be better than this. It's in this though that the show starts to take a turn in this episode because of it. Because this is just more emotional growth of just because he talked to some, just because John talked to some lady and, you know, Nora brings him some coffee or whatever, that's not going to change what he feels and he's not going to get over it to more hurt like that. That takes a long time to deal with and it will always fucking hurt. 
Always. That will always, that type of hurt don't never leave you. But take it from me though. That's just a message from Uncle Triple to you. Just because that hurt will never heal doesn't mean you can't deal with it. Don't fill it with other things. Let the hurt be the hurt and deal with it. It is the most safest thing you can do. It's some real life shit from Uncle Triple to you, right? But it's in this though, like I said, that this episode starts to take a turn of, you know, especially because before that when he was talking to Saffron or whatever, and it's like, there's so much good that you can do right here. You don't have to go anywhere that you can just do what you do right here. And it's like, we can't tell you what it is, but we doing it for you. We doing it for your wife. We doing it for your kid. We doing it for everybody. Wife, husbands, kids, aunts, uncles, cousins. We doing it for everybody because can't nobody do it but us. Those are instances where the brick wall you thought you were pinned over, that's the brick wall you turn around and you smash wide open. It was in that, I really think, that really drove that scene where he's dealing with Pira because they said to her, like, we'll do it like she's standing right here. That is true what they say. As long as you have the memories of those you care about, they never die. Because what it was they taught you, what it was they imprinted on you, becomes a part of you. And those, those are the things that you hold precious and that you protect with everything. Because I do it for the boss and I do it all day, every day, and twice on Sundays. Because that's just what it is. And it can be nothing else other than that. I will say this before we get to the end of this today. That was a hell of a powerful scene. All of it. Like I say, when the show gets you that much invested emotionally, that's how you know. The show's doing it right. And it can be nothing else but that. Oh, but meanwhile, Uncle Crow's like drunk on the front, though. You just drunk. You just... Just... just, just just fucked up. Again, I can understand the justification as to why. But as someone who was supposed to be allegedly in the leadership position, not the best look. Just not. Love Uncle Crow. That's my dude. But, you know. but that's good, though. But, but that's good, though, for this reason. Oh, oh, Oscar wandered off, went to the store, you know what I'm saying, and bought Nicholas Farmer goods, and, you know, he cooked dinner for everybody, so, yay, Oscar's back, let's glomp him. So they glomp him or whatever. Here is the part of the show that I truly appreciate. John taking all that confidence and understanding that, yo, we got to do what needs to be done. Let's steal us a motherfucking airship. Let's do this shit. Yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, run it. Run it. We got to do what we got to do. Grant that photo. <laughs> Somebody make that mod now. Anywho. You got Cross in the per questioning, man. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Here's what I appreciate. Ruby like, no. Oh, unk, it ain't a dumb idea. It's the only one we got. And if saving the world is important, shit, what the hell is Jack in the airship, bro? I appreciate that because, see, Ruby didn't always been a leader. But this is the first time, like, for real, like, her 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 leadership really shining out. Like, she looked at her uncle like, man, nigga, please. Like, we, we can do this. We've we been and done it. We've been and done it. We do it, and we always will. Run it. Nothing but respect. Because, see... That's what you need your leader to be. You need your leader to be, yo. Ain't no, ain't no idea dumb as long as it gets the job done. And it's like even Uncle, even Uncle Crow got a respect. Like, yo, you can come with us if you want to. Alright, man. And, and 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 of course, um, OG Silver Eye Cyclops, like, yeah, run that. Well, she didn't actually say that, but I'm just being dumb. When is Maria Calavera gonna be in that Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battles fun? 
But yo, that's another one in the books, man. Let me get a little straight up in here real quick before we get up out of here. Most dangerous hands in the multiverse should always stay loose, right? Look, this was a real episode. And I really hope that even though we had jokes towards the end, that you really think seriously about what the beginning of this review was and what this episode was and what it can mean to you if you decide that you want to consider it that way. Ain't no brick wall you can't crush and it ain't no chasm you can't jump over if you really want to. You were that strong. Let Uncle Triple remind you real shit on the realest shit I've ever said ever directly to you. You are stronger than you think you are. And even if you think you're strong, you have room to become stronger. Want it always. And once you do, can't nobody stop. And that'll be that. Ruby, volume six, chapter number nine. Lost. So, internet, the end of the year, baby. 2019 is around that corner. So, we'll see what 2019 has to bring. Um, I'll be down here a little bit later on in the lab because some things we need to discuss. Some things are changing around business so we can do better business. So, we'll talk about that later. For now, though, sit back, relax, and chill. You know who I am. You know who we are. You know what we do. And we will be doing more of that. And then some right after these commercial messages. <laughs> Seriously, take what I said to heart, yo. You're stronger than you think you are. Bust down those brick walls and jump those castles and give them the middle finger. More show after these commercial messages.